Okay, so here goes page 35, chapter 6. After lunch, I was in the boys' room washing my hands. I looked in the mirror, and there was Link, smiling. I tried to smile back, but it was too hard. I was scared. Link kept smiling. He started to wash his hands at the sink next to me. And when I got a paper towel, he cupped his hands and threw a ton of water right at me, right down the front of my tan hands, a big brown wet spot. Then, in his baby voice, Link said, Look, look, little Jakey had an accident. A bunch of fourth graders started pointing and laughing. I tried to laugh, too. I tried to be cool, but I couldn't. I couldn't laugh. Not about that. I got angry. I felt like flames were going to shoot out of my eyes. And Link saw. He saw me get mad. Then he saw me get even madder about him seeing me get mad. And Link's beady little eyes and his smirky little mouth laughed at me. I stayed in the boys' room as long as I could. I rubbed my pants with paper towels. I fanned my pants with my hands. But when I went back into class, there was still a little dark spot. And Link had been whispering. Everybody looked at me when I came in the door. My face turned bright pink. And when I sat down across from Link, he held his nose and made a face. I couldn't help it. I was so mad. And it made me feel mean. And I lost it. I turned toward Link and punched him on the shoulder with all my might. Might is something I don't have a lot of. So I know I didn't really hurt him. Excuse me. But Link was a lot better at acting than Abby. He grabbed his shoulder and knocked a book off my desk. Ah, oh, he shouted. Oh, my arm, my arm. Mrs. Battle, Mrs. Brattle was there in one second flat. Jake, I am ashamed of you. Link looked and it looked. Link let his arm flop down like it was broken and whimpered. Ah, oh, my arm, my arm, it hurts. Mrs. Brattle said, Ted, please help Link down to the nurse's office. And Jake, you come with me. As Link left the room, he peeked a look back at me and he smiled. Link Baxter was off to get some ice and some friendly words from the nurse. And me, I was off to talk to the principal. Probably not a happy little chat. And my pants still had a big stain down the front. Mrs. Brattle walked me down the, walked me down the hall. On the way, I figured something out. Link was a bigger problem than Abby had ever faced. That was This was war, and I was losing big time. Not cool, not cool at all. Chapter 7, learning my lesson. When people are mad at you, they do a lot of pointing. In the office, Mrs. Brattle pointed to a chair. She said, wait here. No smiles. Then she went to the principal's office. A minute later, she came out. So did Mrs. Cart. Mrs. Cart pointed to her office and said, in there, Jake. I had never been to the principal's office before. There was a big gray desk. There was a row of big gray bookcases, and there was a big gray principal. Mrs. Cart had gray shoes, a gray dress, and gray hair. And she was taller than Mrs. Brattle, even taller than my dad. She pointed to a gray chair in front of her desk. Sit there, Jake. So I sat down. Then she said, you know, it's against the rules to hit someone, don't you? It wasn't a question. And I said, yes, I know. Then why did you hit Link Baxter? This was the tricky part. If I told Link, if I told about Link being a bully, then I would be a tattletale. But if I didn't say anything, then she would think I was some crazy hitter. So I pointed at the spot on my pants and said, some water got on my pants in the boys' room. And I thought Link was making fun of me. So simple, so true, so easy for Mrs. Carp to understand. And she did. Just like that, she got a friendly look on her face and said, I understand about feeling embarrassed, Jake. But do you see that hidden is wrong? 
no matter what. And I said, yes, because it was true. I really was sorry I hit Link. I did not want to have a fight with Link ever for two reasons. First, because it's not good to hit and kick and scratch and pull hair and roll around on the ground. And second, because I knew that would happen to me if I ever did get in a fight with Link. I would turn into one huge purple bruise. So Mrs. Carp sent me back to my classroom. She didn't even call my mom. As she opened the door to our office for me, she said, I'm sure you've learned your lesson, haven't you, Jake? And I said, yes, Mrs. Carp. Only I didn't know if we were talking about the same lesson. As I walked from the school office toward Mrs. Brattle's room, Link came out of the nurse's office. I think he had been waiting for me. He walked beside me in the empty hallway. Link seemed bigger than ever. He gave me this bully smile and said, nice move, Flake. Have a good time with the principal. This was the first time I had been alone with Link. I was scared, but I said, it wasn't so bad. We kept walking. Being alone with Link was different. And I thought that maybe a bully stops being a bully if there aren't some other kids around to watch. I thought that maybe he's only a super bully when he was an audience. For a second, it felt like Link Baxter was just this big kid and I was walking down the hall with him. Back then, I didn't know as much about bullies as I do now. So I said, how come you pick on me? Wrong question. The super bully was back. Link looked at me like I was a bug. He said, dumb question. And I thought maybe he was going to push me into a locker or something, but he didn't. And we just kept walking. But it was like my question confused him. And just before we got back to, to the room, room 23, and just before we got back to room 23, I knew. I knew why he didn't answer the question. He didn't because he couldn't. He couldn't tell me why because he didn't really know. But there had to be a reason why Link was a bully. And if I could figure out that reason, or if I could give him a reason not to be a bully, then maybe Link Baxter, super bully, will become Link Baxter, ex super bully. Chapter eight, Dangerous Duo. The next week was not fun. Every chance he got, Link did something mean, like step on my red pen and break it, or something embarrassing like push me into a bunch of fourth grade girls into the cafeteria, or something annoying like hide my book bag under the seats at the back of the bus. I was starting to think that Link was a bully because Link was a bully, and I was starting to think there was nothing I could do about it except live with it every day for the rest of my life. Just then, I was sure things could not get any worse. They did. Thanks to Mrs. Bradham. Thanksgiving was coming, and we all had to do a social studies project about it. Mrs. Bradham planned all the topics, and Mrs. Bradham wanted everyone to work in pairs. And Mrs. Bradham chose the pairs, and one pair was Jake Drake and Link Baxter. We had to do a report to show how the Native Americans had lived. Link loved it. He thought it was so funny. A big joke. He said, <clears throat> hey, Flake, this is great. It's you and me. We get to make a TP together. Tell you what, I'll do the T part and you can take care of the P. Get it? The P? Of course, I want to tell Link how dumb he was. Because the Native Americans at the first Thanksgiving never saw a teepee. They lived in wee twos, round wigums made of poles and bark. And they made long houses too. But you don't say things like that to a super bully. I went to Mrs. Brattle when everyone else went to lunch. 
I said, Mrs. Bradham, I don't think I should work with Link on the Thanksgiving project. She said, oh, why is that? Well, I said, I just think I'd do better with someone else. Mrs. Bradham said, I'm sorry, but everyone else is already paired up, Jay. I'm sure you and Link will do just fine. On the bus home that day, Link said, that Thanksgiving thing, you're going to do the report, Flake. I don't do dumb stuff like that. I said, what do you mean? We're partners. Link said, yeah, right. And you're the partner who has to do the project. The next day we had library period. I watched Link. He went right to the reference section. He got the end encyclopedia. Good, I thought. He's going to look up some things about Native Americans. Link carried the encyclopedia to a table at the back of the library. My partner was working. Looking good to me. I went to find some other stuff about Native Americans in Massachusetts. Near the end of the period, <clears throat> I went to show Link the books I found. He looked up and said, great job, Blake. And I said, what do you mean? He said, take a look. Behind the encyclopedia, Link was reading a book of the Garfield cartoons. He said, I love social studies, don't you? So there it was. My partner wasn't just a super bully. He was also a moron. That's right there. I still have this to read. And that's page 48. The timer's going off. I went over my minutes. I'm going to have to stop now. It's getting good, isn't it? Bye.